Welcome to the Detroit Institute of Arts, Thursdays at the Museum Program. I'm Ian Rapnicki. I'm the Community Engagement Manager with the DIA. And today I'm joined by DIA Studio Coordinator Zach Freeling and by artist Gail Watson to discuss her history with the DIA, uh, the Hannon Center and exhibitions around Southeast Michigan. So you can follow along today as Gail demonstrates the no tan technique of using scissors and a few sheets of black and white paper to make simple but elegant works of art. And if you'd like to ask a question, you can do so by selecting the Q&A icon. You might see a question mark in the top right of your screen. I'll be monitoring those questions today. And this event's being recorded so you can watch it again if you follow the same link you used to get here today. Uh, for the next few days, that video will, will live at that link. So you can also find uh, videos from past Thursday programs on our YouTube page. Um, so if you have your materials ready, then let's get started and I'll throw it over to Zach. All right, thank you, Ian. Uh, I'm Zach Preeling, Studio Coordinator and Instructor here at the DIA. Um, thank you for joining us. We've been doing these um, studio visits the first Thursday of every month and it's been fun every time. Thanks for joining us again, or if you're here for the first time. Um, as Ian said, we're going to be talking with Gail Watson, who will be demonstrating the art of Notan. Scissors, glue, black or black and white sheet of paper, or any two contrasting colors. Um, you can follow along now or just sit back and enjoy and try out the project at your leisure sometime this weekend, maybe. Um, and we'd love for you to show us your artwork, too. We've got the email there at the bottom. We'll share that again later community engagement at dia.org send us your pictures of what you make and we'll share them and we just want to see it so here is um a sample of gail's work hi gail welcome hi thank you zach yes that particular uh piece there is um uh, representative of what no time is and uh it's basically black and white, positive and negative. And it shows how uh, the uh, positive and negative space are dependent on each other, that you really can't have one without the other. So this form of art, it's a Japanese form of art uh, called Notan, was first introduced to the West in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And um, you can just make all kinds of beautiful designs and patterns uh, when uh, creating this Notan art. And I was introduced to it at one of my art classes at the Hannon Center. So I just fell in love with it, the freshness of the black and white it just allows your eye to go to that particular design or pattern and you don't have the um, any color interruption is how I like to call it. You don't have any any color interruption in there. It's just strictly black and white and it, it just flows. So um, as I said, I was introduced to it at Hannon and um, we've learned so many things so many things. My background is not art. I'm actually, I was actually a business major. I did not come into this world of art until after I retired, probably about two years after I had retired. And someone introduced me to the Hannon Center and that's how I got involved. You're never too old to learn something new. And so I just really fell into it. Whatever was presented to me in any of the classes, whether it was painting or working with clay, I was always enthusiastic, always ready to get involved and to learn something new. But this particular black and white is something that really resonated with me. And uh, 
even in pen and ink, I, I do a lot of work in, uh, using pen and ink, and, and it's, of course, black pen. But um, I also had an opportunity to uh, work on uh, some black and white over at the, at the DIA. And I might mention that Hannon partners with uh, the DIA. We're one of the community groups that, that, Hannon, or that the DIA works with. And so I uh, had a lot of fun uh, doing that, uh, working on different projects. Um, and so um, I'd like to, if I could, maybe show you how. Yeah, Gail, that would be great. Thanks for all that. That's a lot of great um, rundown. I love hearing about, you know, yeah, that's a great message that it's never too late to try something new. I think that's a good message for, for anyone. And yeah, we'll get to a little bit of those other materials and art projects and things in a bit. But yeah, I think for now, do you want to show us how you make make a make a project? Absolutely. So all you right. have a square Gail, interrupt here while while we're on the the subject of you getting started. Um, we have a question from Herman who was wondering how long you've been doing this. You've talked about starting later in life, mm. uh, but how long have you been doing this type of art? This Notan art I started doing probably about maybe four years ago. Four and, years uh, ago? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started doing it about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's stuck with me ever since. I've learned how to do other forms of art, but uh, this is like my go-to. I, I, I always go back to um, the snow tan. Awesome. I appreciate you, you answering the question. I might interrupt periodically, so be prepared as the questions come in. That's great. We love to see questions. No, yeah, no we'll, try to, we'll try to keep the audience kind of engaged in the conversation as, as it goes. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Yeah, and that's great, Gail. Four years, you've done quite a bit in that amount of time. I mean, I know you, besides your work with Hannon and the DIA, you, I know you've exhibited other places around town and had, you know, been in shows. So that's that's great for, you know, four years now, a huge amount of time. But yeah, I think I've got my materials ready. I've got some black and white paper. I've got some scissors. All right. So I'm going to follow along too. Show us, show us what you got, Gail. Okay, I've got my black paper here. And I've got my white paper. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one of the ways that you can do this is you can take your, your black paper and um, start to cut your pattern. Now, I don't draw anything at all. I just follow the scissors. I just start to cut and I'm always pleased with my end result. So we'll see what I come up with with this afternoon. Some people like to use smaller scissors, but I've always used these large ones. And um, it's always worked well for me. I like that too, Gail, that you mentioned you don't you don't plan, you just kind of follow along, or you just kind of just do it intuitively. I think that, that that's great that that's kind of a, a part of the process. As great as it is to plan out your artwork, sometimes it is really refreshing and nice just to just be free and just explore and right. have fun with it. So this is a very uh, simple, basic design here. And then you want to take your your white paper and and uh, start to glue this down. I have a comment from um, Jennifer it says she came to one of your classes at the DIA and really enjoyed it. Also, a, a take on what's going on that that this process is uh, like improv improv. Uh, like jazz musicians might use, yeah. I would agree with that. It's um, I I just get such a good uh, feeling uh, when I'm creating art, and this especially. I as I said, I never know how it's going to turn out, and uh, 
it's always a bit of a surprise, but I'm always pleased with it. With the re end result. Here, here's here's a process question so if people can follow along. It says uh, Richard wants to know, do you start with the on the folded end or the open end? So I'm imagining does the cutting begin on the, the fold or the open end? The cutting begins on the fold. In this particular um, this particular uh, method, uh, you start cutting on the fold. As a matter of fact, just to give you an idea, your fold is, is here, right down the center. And that's where the cutting actually started. And then you move towards the open end, but you don't go all the way out because if you go all the way out, then you've kind of lost your pattern. So, so yeah, but I have another another uh, form of um, or method for doing this, and uh, you actually actually cut on the open end, and I will show you that in just a second here. Sounds like sounds like you just kind of experiment, and you might find one one uh, technique that you just you like. You know, it doesn't seem like there's necessarily a wrong way to do it. It's just kind of following the the results that you like. Exactly. There's more than one way to get to to your your end results, and this this is basically how that looks. That one that I just did. Oh, nice. That, that pattern. So now I'm going to show you the open end one. Where you just start to cut. You just start to make your pattern or from the open end. So I'm just going to cut. This is what's known as an expansion square. So you're going to cut on each each open end. And is that paper folded, Gail, or is that just a? It was folded, but I'm not using the fold on this one. Is okay. that right? Yeah, it was folded. So there's three ends of it, and now here's the fourth end. And when you put it back together, you will actually start with your with with your your square that you've actually cut from. And then you'll take your pieces that you that you cut. kind of like opening up a book and you'll put them back like so. so let me just um, show you one that was in the oven. <laughs> and oh, lovely. that's how how the end result uh, what the end result looks like. And you can make these designs as, as as elaborate as you want or as simple as you as you would want them. What I like so much about Notan is that it's the 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 simple.